So there are three parts really to the model of electricity. We've got um, potential difference and current, we've defined those already. And really, if we can understand this concept of resistance, we can put the whole thing together. Hopefully you've realized at some point that applying a, a potential difference across a um, conductor doesn't always give you the same amount of current. So there must be a third concept for us to get our heads around here. And this third concept is resistance. Once we know this, we can put the three things together. And we've got a model that we can apply to all um, electric circuits. As long as they're fairly straightforward circuits, there are complicated um, components that you come to later where this isn't true. But uh, what's called a lump model of electricity just involves these three ideas. This is down to uh, Kirchhoff in the 19th century kind of developed these models of electricity. So in this lesson we need to be able to describe what resistance is. We need to be able to define it in the same way that we've defined um, current and voltage and potential difference. And we need to try to put the whole thing together. Obviously, this is the hard bit. This is the kind of juggling trick. Juggling with one thing's easy. Juggling with two things, not too bad. Juggling with three things does need a little bit of skill and practice. So we'll start off just looking at a little model to try to get ourselves into the idea of what resistance means. OK, so here's our model. Uh, we've got a potential difference V. We've got a current I. We've got some resistance R. Here's our cells giving us some potential difference, lovely cells where we can just have a third of a cell if we want to, which is tricky in the real world, but handy on a simulation. I've got four milliamps. Okay, what we need to think about is how can we use this idea to define what resistance um, means? Well, what we know is two volts in this case gives us four milliamps. That's the resistance of 500 ohms. If I turn the resistance up to, let's say, a th uh, let's say 800 ohms, right, then the current's gone down to 2.5 milliamps. How can I get it back to 4 milliamps? Well, I can turn the potential difference up, and eventually when I get to 3.2 volts, then I've gone back to 4 milliamps. So the, the sort of definition of resistance is how many volts, how, how much potential difference do I need to get a certain amount of current to flow? If I've increased the resistance, I need more potential difference to get the same amount of current to flow through the resistor. So this leads us to the definition of what one ohm of resistance means. So what that is, resistance, as we've said, is how much potential difference does it take to make some current, a certain amount of current, we're going to talk about one amp in a minute, but a certain amount of current throw through a material. You've got a sort of general kind of idea of this, hopefully, which is it means how hard it is to make the current flow. The higher the resistance, the harder it is to make the current flow through the material. So our definition right, is that a resistor has a resistance of 1 ohm if you need 1 volt of potential difference to make 1 amp of current flow through it. So if your resistance is 2 ohms, you need 2 volts to make 1 amp flow through it. If the resistance is 10 ohms, you're going to need 10 volts to make 1 amp flow. Obviously, you might not have 10 volts, so if it's 10 ohms and 1 volt, you only get a tenth of an amp. This gives us our equation. Resistance is voltage divided by current. So if it takes 5 volts to get 1 amp, 5 divided by 1 gives us a resistance of 5 ohms. If 10 volts gives us 2 amps, 10 divided by 2 is still 5 ohms. Okay, a standard SI units, resistance, ohms, Greek letter omega, named after uh, George Ohm, who did a lot of work on this. So it's a capital omega. Uh, potential difference, obviously, still in volts and current in amps. So here's the tricky bit. We need to put all this together. One of the things that makes this hard at A-level is that you often get a lot of information in the question, which you will need, but you don't need it all at the start. So what's the current in this circuit? You might think, well, I've got two uh, equations for current. I've got uh, I equals Q over T. I've got I equals Q over T, but I've also got I equals V over R. Which do I need? Well, I've got a T, but I've got no Q. But I have got a V and I have got an R. So I'll do I equals V over R. Current equals potential difference divided by resistance. 12 volts, 4 ohms, no catches in the units. Gives us a current of 3 amps. What's the total charge? Well, now we need a charge equation, so we've got Q equals IT. The current, we've just worked out, is 3 amps. The time, be careful with this because it's 10 minutes, so we need to do 10 times 60. That gives you 1,800 coulombs. 
what's the energy there are equations for this that we'll do later but if you understand the basic principles you can do this from first principles so we know we've got 1800 coulombs of charge and each one was carrying 12 joules of energy 12 volts means 12 joules of energy for every coulomb of charge so that's expressed as an equation v equals w over q so w is q times v the amount of charge times the amount of energy that each charge has that's 1800 coulombs of charge times 12 volts gives us 21,600 joules of energy what's the power again if you go back to the power equation power is energy divided by time so we've got that's 21,600 joules of energy in 10 minutes which is 600 seconds that gives us 36 watts okay you can put all this together and you just know that 12 volts times 3 amps power is voltage times current is an equation you should have come across in GCSE okay question two a battery storing 2.4 kilojoules of energy so watch the units here is used to to run a phone which uses 6 volts and 20 milliamps so you've charged your battery up we've got 2.4 kilojoules of energy stored in it and it's going to run a phone which uses 6 volts and takes 20 milliamps obviously that will vary according to what you're doing with the phone but let's just take that as an average so the resistance of the phone circuit so this is resistance is voltage divided by current we've got a little trap here milliamps so that's 60 divided by 20 times 10 to the minus 3 don't try and move the decimal point and make it 0.02 or anything that just put 10 to the minus 3 in your calculator that'll sort it out for you so 6 times 20 times 10 to the minus 3 gives you 300 ohms the total charge that can pass through the battery okay so remember not this the battery is not producing the charge okay the charge is just flowing through the battery so the total charge well we've got um 2.4 kilojoules each coulomb of charge is getting six joules okay so the way we work that out is to say that the charge that it can that it can give that energy to is the amount of energy divided by the amount of energy going to each coulomb of charge that's this equation the energy divided by the charge the energy per unit charge 2.4 times 10 to the 3 because it's kilojoules okay and that gives you 400 coulombs how long will it take this charge to flow well we've got uh, 400 coulombs it's flowing at 20 milliamps so 20 millicoulombs of charge per second so q equals it we're trying to work out a t so t equals q over i 400 um, coulombs of charge at a rate a current of 20 milliamps so 20 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs per second gives you 20,000 seconds